So, as you see here, this is a 1931 Walter Johnson. Just arrived today. Oddly enough, this card looks like a W517, but I don't see it in their set. But it's 1931, and apparently these two pieces came out of somebody's scrapbook. The back is very clean. Uh, the other card in this set is, in this set is Aussie Blue, which both Hall of Famers, of course, Washington Senators. Uh, this came away from Borneo, believe it or not. Uh, so these days, you don't know where you're going to find things from uh, baseball memorabilia because it's become a, truly a worldwide sport. Here we have a beautiful card of the first home run king, actually. The man who held the record until Babe Ruth. Uh, this gentleman, Williams, on a gold Buckner gold coin card from 1888. Uh, you have, I have other cards that are older than that. It's not much older because, as you know, the old one judge cards of 1887 were uh, out for quite some time. <laughs> That was a phone call. Uh, you have the fan craze cards. They came around 1904, 1906. Uh, this is Mr. Shrek and Ghost, a good player for his day. Uh, wound up going into politics, wound up making money in real estate. Uh, so he did very well for himself. As you can see here, this is a an 01 Judge card. 1887. In very good condition. I have a few of them. The others are encased. Or the old coin term slab where that whole thing of grading started. Uh, here you have a beautiful set. This is a 1908. American Caramel. Harry Davis. Philadelphia Athletics at that time. Uh, here's the other Philadelphia Athletics teammate. The Hall of Famer Chief Bender. You have a lot of Hall of Famers here. You have uh, quite a few. Chick Stahl. Eddie Collins. Big Bill Deneen of the St. Louis Browns. Some minor leaguers like Sean to see here from Roanoke. Uh, this card is like a $600 card right here. Uh, some of the others look like the Collins, even though it wasn't the greatest condition. It's still a $200, $300 card. The Benders are like a $300 card. This is like a $650 card. This is Dorner from Kansas City, minor leaguer. Came to the majors later on in his career. Uh, Jesse Taniel out of Washington, D.C., uh, you have quite a few Hall of Fame people here. Vic Willis, another great pitcher of his time. Hall of Fame. Early Brooklyn Dodgers. McIntyre. Of course, Frank Chance. of Tinkers of Evers of Chance. And of course, Harry Steinfeld. Famous who was Harry Steinfeld. The third baseman. Bob Besha. With the Cincinnati Reds. The Spider, Wallace. St. Louis Browns. One of the few stars they had at the time. Even though they had a good team at that time. And later on, they fell... Into ill repair and the team had to be sold. Rube Marquardt, the eleven thousand dollar lemon, who became a uh, Hall of Fame pitcher. I have his autograph also. Uh, the great Hook Wilts. You see, the painting shows uh, over his Giants uniform because he was traded at the time. Uh, you also, of course, Pittsburgh Pirates. Deacon Philippe, a very good pitcher of his time. Some of these guys belong in the Hall of Fame in their own right. They just there's no more old timers committee to put them in. And it, their records are being forgotten now. Dick Rudolph out of Toronto, minor leaguer. Uh, remember something about the T206 series, which is what you're looking at here. This series ran from 1909 to 1911. Uh, it was the first major or large card set ever produced. You wouldn't have a card set close to the size until Topps comes around in the 1950s. Uh, Howie Camnets, Pittsburgh. Uh, of course, the great Chief Myers, another Hall of Famer, playing for the New York Giants, great catcher. And a lot of Native Americans are referred to it by the racist term chief by, by Caucasian audiences at that time. Uh, not realize some of those people you can be calling chief actually look like your average black man in the street today. Uh, that's why Christmas Addicts first made to die for the revolution and say it was a black man. He's actually a Mohawk. Uh, John Amos of Good Times is actually a Mohawk. But that's another story, another history. Uh, you have a few people here, Felts. More great ball players, great ball player and manager, Fred Clark. Uh, you have other greats here. Chick Stahl, Hal Chase, who unfortunately belongs in the Hall of Fame, but he'll never go there. Why? Crudges last a long time. And Chick Stahl, 
uh, was a great player who died young, died of illness, and was ven venerated and thought he was a good man. He was, apparently, a great ball player and a very good manager. Whereas Hal Chase, great ball player. Problem is, he hung around gamblers. And he's always suspected of throwing games, even though they could not prove it. That's how good he was at hiding it. Uh, and so that has remained a stigma to this day. Kind of like years later, not due to gambling, uh, Dick Allen is, is vilified. And will never get in the Hall of Fame, even though he deserves it. Someone who did have a connection to gambling, but will never get in, even though he deserves it. Pete Rose deserves to get in the Hall of Fame. Sometimes they need to let things go. Judge him on his play alone. If you can't prove it, let it fly. Uh, this is a Hal Chase also. Both of these are Piedmonts and Sweet K Pro Bluebacks. Uh, they have many backings to them. The harder ones to get are like Polar Bear, uh, Old Mill, uh, Hassan Mecca, uh, a few of those guys. Uh, uh, there was another one I think called um, Imperial. Uh, those are even harder backs to get. So you might see the same face, different backs on a lot of T206 cards. Uh, here you got Hob Farris, great pitcher for his time also. St. Louis Browns. Jake Weimer, this guy only played like nine years in Major League Baseball, New York Giants, but he had like 420 game seasons. So he's a very good guy, very good pitcher. Left the uh, game young and died fairly young too. Uh, Tommy Leach, Hall of Famer, of course. Art Devlin, New York Giants, another great one. And their manager, one of the greats, he'd been a player in Baltimore in the 19th century. And when the uh, National League expanded and they brought the Giants out, uh, they had him as the manager. Great manager. He hired a black gentleman named Rube Marquard, not Rube Marquard, um, Rube Foster, to actually teach and train a already talented major league pitcher, Christy Matthewson, uh, who became a star. This was a nut right here, a real character, Rube Waddell. Rube was another term that was a biased term that was used towards anybody that was from the countryside. Considered a rube. Uh, rube Marquard was one. Rube Waddell was another. Rube Waddell, though, kind of fit the bill. Rube Waddell was a wacko. He would show up late for games. They'd have to send search parties for him and find him wrestling alligators instead of being at the game in uniform. Eventually, one day, there was a flood in the Midwest, and he went to help out, stood in cold water, more than knee-deep, waist-deep, and caught, of course, pneumonia and died. So he died a young man, but he went to the Hall of Fame. He was a great pitcher. He just was unpredictable as can be. Uh, a character of his day. Uh, a lot of ballplayers are considered roughnecks and characters. Is uh, U.R. Jennings, uh, who always used to let a big yell and do his little Native American dance on base. Another Hall of Famer. Here you have not so well-known guy. Cha Chappelle was a good player. He's a good pitcher. Nothing special. Uh, beautiful card, though. I love the pose. Some of these have some interesting looks to them. Uh, and that what attracts you is sometimes is the look or the angle of the card. Uh, when you have ballplayers who aren't really stars, McLean, others, and so on and so forth, but the card itself is just a beautiful piece of work. Uh, Topsy Hartzell, great hitter. Belongs to the Hall of Fame. You probably never go there again because, again, there's no old times committee. Yet, here's a man who uh, played for the Philadelphia Athletics uh, for about a 10 year period. And he put out a nice production of hits, good batting averages, the whole nine yards. He got some T205s. These are interesting here Bob Groom, Senators, uh, Frank Holman Baker. Uh, he got the name Holman Baker because he could hit 14 home runs, 15 home runs in the season. That's how hard the ball was then. Miller Huggins as a player, of course, he's more well-known as a manager. 27 Yankees. Driven to his grave, they say sometimes, by the antics of uh, Babe Ruth and company. Uh, but here he was as a player. Here, of course, you have Hugh Duffy. Another great, great uh, manager and player. Hall of Famer. You know, many of these old-time ball players, some of them, again, were good, solid players. They just didn't have um, the stats to put them over. But they were good, solid players. Again, Topsy Hartzell you saw earlier with the Athletic Series, again, in, uh, on a T205 card. I like the T205s because the colorful uh, surroundings and unpredictable background. Sometimes they had them in a 
baseball diamond, something that they had on a plain field. Uh, this is the famous Jack Lord, who was a very good ball player of his day. I'm not saying he's Hall of Fame material, but he was a very solid ball player. Here's uh, some more gentlemen down here coming out of the Hassan Mecca group. T202s and so on, and T205s. Brooklyn Dodgers, of course, anything Brooklyn Dodgers uh, worth money, of course. A lot of these cars that you looked at here are like two, three hundred dollar, hundred and fifty, eighty dollar to three hundred dollar cards. Zach Weed, Hall of Famer. Again, Brooklyn Dodgers. This came from a thing called I actually have some of the tins. The original tins that these came in. These were mints. Little candy mints. And the bottom of the little round can would be this flat photograph, little round card. Okay? They were called Colgan's chips. The Colgan chips were like breath fresheners. Uh, this one's of Gibson of Pittsburgh. Uh, I have another one that I have also slabbed. Uh, actually, one of Zach Wheat. Uh, that's that I keep in another album. We have a large collection here. My collection is not as big as many, but larger than, than most. Uh, again, very diversified. Uh, here you have Eddie Seacott. Of course, you know where he's famous from. 1919 Black Sox scandal. Yes, Eddie Seacott. Hard to get his stuff. He has the famous or infamous Hal Chase again. These were Hassan Mecca double folder cards. Came around 1911 called T202s. As you see on the opposite side, would fold over, connect with the legs of the other ball player. Boom. And he'd have both their stats. Here and here. Both their stats. Running down the back. So they were kind of a fun cards to, to have at the time. You know, uh, we did a lot of interesting things with baseball back then. Uh, that made, this is a Hassan Mecca back to the triple folder cards, which are these. I have a couple of these also. Uh, this one is one of actually my favorite turn-of-the-century players, Clyde Milans. Very much forgotten base stealing master of his day. Uh, and a very hard player, very good, very strong player. Kid Elberfield would go from the Senators, and he was actually before that uh, a member of the Yankees or Highlanders. Kid Elberfield. We saw him earlier on a T206 card, actually. This is a generic card. It's of a ball player, of a pro ball player. We don't know who it is. There's no name really on it. Uh, nothing here, as you can see, when I size it up to say who this gentleman is. You just know it's an early ball card on a playing card. And it was done somewhere pre-1920. Those are the things we do know. Uh, again, there's such a wide variety of cards. Uh, T207s, which you have here. The brown backs, as they call because the background was often brown. You know, Turner here from Cleveland Indians. Larry Doyle from the New York Giants. He was a star player, by the way. Uh, Wolverton was a good player. He wasn't anything spectacular. Nothing to write home about. Uh, these cards are beautiful examples. Here we have Napoleon Rajoy again. You had him earlier. I said that card's like a 650 card. This is another card that came from a game. I'll flip it over. Came from a game that included these cards in them. And as you see, there were other game cards too. Baseball game cards. That's the flip side of this one here, which of course has the famous Smokey Joe Woods. One of the hardest throwers of baseball history. Um, played for the Boston Red Sox for quite some time as a nucleus of the team. This is a coin. As you see, this one, uh, when I was a kid, they had coins that came out of the tops, and before that, uh, something called London Chips. This was a coin that came on the Sweet Cape Rel, which was tobacco. As you see, this one's of Frank Homer and Baker again. Uh, another Hall of Famer, and again, even though it's a little coin and it's uh, showing its age a little bit, it's got a little nice little value to it. To show you how diversified things were, and I'm going to stop after this because this is going to run too long. Here you have what was called blankets. These came around 1914. Okay, you had man. I'm going to tell you a little bit why they were called blankets. As you see, they're made of cloth. Frank McBride. Taylor. Grant, representing both National and American League teams, but also 
Because when he came out, it was interesting. There's only a few sets, like Cracker Jack card sets, that actually also had Federal League players in it. The Third League, the, the Bandit League. The only last from 1914 to 1915. Prior to that, the only league that existed before that, American Association. This existed until like the 1890s. There's George Burns, another great ball player. Wilson, fantastic ball player of his time, but not good enough to make Hall of Fame. Keating, uh, that's in Highlander, by the way, an early Yankee. He played over in the Highlander Park, which had a nice little hill in the back that they had to run up to catch the ball in the right field. Jake Dupert, great Hall of Famer, playing out of Brooklyn. Uh, had some other cards of him, by the way, also. Big Ed Walsh, another Hall of Famer. A lot of these guys you don't hear about because these guys went in the Hall of Fame when I was a kid. They went when we still had the Old Timers Committee, which was a good committee to have because, and the Negro League community that we had, that, that was a committee that also started up thanks to Ted Williams bringing up the name of some of the great Negro League ball players and speaking as to their greatness. Bauman, as you see here, American Liga. Nap Rooker. Nap was usually short for Napoleon, by the way. Uh, Hook Wiltz, New York Giants. You saw him earlier with a card. That was a gentleman that had the two two tone uniform that you saw earlier, because uh, he was he was traded at the time. So you're getting all these wonderful. You see the backs of them. Of course, you don't see the name ones. You see the back. When you see the backs, the same piece, but just no name on it. When you see Harry Kovaleski, Harry Kovaleski had a brother that also played in Major League Baseball. Uh, Kovaleski was for Detroit, the old wooden stadium. I remember when that stadium was still around. Uh, it burned to the ground, and that was one of the last wooden stadiums, but probably the last wooden stadium ever built. Here you have candy strip cards. These were exactly that. They were strips, sometimes four, five, six cartoonish-looking cards, sometimes photographs. They've been touched up with paint. Uh, and they were came out of a vending machine for a nickel, a dime, a penny, whatever, uh, over the years that, that went up, starting with a penny, and then later on a nickel, and later on a dime. Uh, but you had Donnie Bush, Casey Stangle, as you see here, as a player. Okay? Here's Casey Stangle, New York Giants, but guess what? When you look on his hat, what does he got there? A B. Why? He had just left the Brooklyn Dodgers. This car, believe it or not, I think I bought this for like 15 bucks two decades ago, or less than two decades ago. Yeah, probably two decades ago. And it's now like a $650 card. Uh, here's Benny Koff. The bottle-shaped bat. Jesse Bonds, Hall of Famer, just like Casey Stangler. Hank Bancroft, another Hall of Famer. Heine Groh, he had a special bat that was shaped like a bottle. But it was legal. Roger Hornsby with the sharpest eyes and sharpest hitters. Again, you see how many of them are really cartoonish. Ray Schalk, Hall of Famer. Catcher. Now, see how this was a little different. This is a candy strip card of the great Trish Speaker, but look how it looks. You can see it's a photograph that's been touched up. That's what's happened there. Of course, Grover Cleveland Alexander, who, although he had a drinking problem, could pitch great right into his old age. Uh, made a big comeback in the 1920s. Hank Gowdy, another famous ball player. This little coin piece you're seeing right here. Again, we talked about baseball games, how popular they were. Well, this came from a game that had Walter Johnson, the famous Hall of Famer in it. And then you had chocolate cards and others and so on that came out at various times, such as these, these little beauties here, which I find interesting because I just love the way they look. Again, Jesse Barnes is here. Beautiful card. These are chocolate, can, came with candies. Heine Grow, the guy with the bottle-shaped bat again. Uh... This gentleman here, who do we have here? I'll tell you in a minute. That looks like Hank Gowdy again. You see, he has champions written on there. And he has a beautiful card. Look at this photograph card. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful action card? And yet, that's from the 19 teens. This spirit here. Uh, teens, early 1920s, 19 teens, is a rare period. Uh, that's Max Carey, by the way. 
Babe Adams. Max Carey, Babe Adams. These are on Boris, first base. Now look at the action shots you're getting here. This is rare stuff for his time. These action shots are very rare stuff for his time. Actual photographs of each of these ball players in action. And these are done on candy cards and on these, bread cards. Came with like Bond bread uh, and other tasty bread, so on and so forth. Uh, here you have Frank Welch on the card. Here you have another great Hall of Famer here. Jake Dupert again appears. Here you have a beautiful game type card. And who's there? Little Poison, Lloyd Wainer. Yeah, Paul and Lloyd Wainer. They were two brothers who were both stars. At this point, I'll pull off the air and see how this runs back. Uh, as I say, you know, you have all these wonderful cards. There's Ossie Blues, Hall of Famer, that we opened with. Walter Johnson, Hall of Famer, that we opened with. These are from 1931, 1930, 31. Uh, these came over from Borneo, believe it or not. They just arrived today. Uh, so these are rare. They're probably related to the W-517. I'll investigate further. But, you know, you see a lot of beautiful nostalgia cards and things that throwbacks to uh, various ages past. I thank God I came up as the last group. I mean, I'm about almost 60, where you had cards that came out that were very entertaining and inventive. Uh, everything from coins to 3Ds to triple folder cards, the cards that stood on their own. Uh, the next series I'm going to put up will be stuff starting with the early 1930s, running down to the 1940s. I'll probably close up with some Bond bread cards and so on and so forth, which is one of the first card sets that features Jackie Robinson, by the way. Have a good evening. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to throw this on the air and see how it does. Pardon my amateurish movement of the camera, film with my phone, but uh, I'm an old man. What can I tell you? Take care.